When you talk about technocrats within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs sleeping on their job, how easy is it to reprimand some of these countries, considering that these countries, the bilateral relations are pretty good, the funding, uh, the, the aid donor funding that they, they provide is pretty good, and, and Zambia benefits from it greatly. How easy is it to reprimand such a country? You can. It doesn't matter. At bilateral level, we are all equal. We are a sovereign, independent nation, proud of being who we are as Zambians. Uh, so no one dictates us to us values that we should embrace because they're supporting uh, our budget, because they're giving us some money and because they are funding some projects. They have to fund all those projects within the perimeter of who we are as a people. So uh, it doesn't matter whether it's the EU. You have to call them to order. It doesn't matter whether it's Americans. You have to call them to order. In this country, you have President Edgar Lungu who chased the American ambassador because the American ambassador thought he could dictate programs to the people of Zambia and to the people of, to the government of Zambia. And uh, we revoked his status. It doesn't matter how big you are. We are Zambians and we are proud of who, of who we are. No one should take that away. And it shouldn't, our relationship shouldn't be, shouldn't, uh, uh, be focused on a, a one-sided nature, junior, senior partners. We are not juniors to anyone. We are a sovereign, independent nation with an illustrious but, history. And Dr. Kaunda demonstrated how he upheld those relations. He was shoulder to shoulder, whether it was with Margaret Thatcher, whether it was with uh, a, a, a Ronald Reagan. He stood shoulder to shoulder, whether it was Mao Zedong from China. And that's what we want our leaders. That's what our people want to see in our leaders. But if it was, if it was as easy as you may be putting it, don't you think it would have been done by now? Okay, so what, what could have been done? As soon as a complaint was raised, as soon as this matter became public, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs should have informed the nation that they've engaged the, the particular embassies. We should have seen pictures of those embassies summoned to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. If the uh, explanation was not satisfactory, there are mechanisms in, it in which to institute your protest, including a demarche, sometimes even revocation of ambassador status, they give you another person, depending on the gravity of the offense, but you take action. Because if you don't, we are going to have this discussion next year. May 17th is an annual celebration for the LGBT against the phobias. So do we need this discussion next year? So it depends to how we handle this matter this year. We were speaking with uh, foreign policy expert uh, in Kelly's calendar earlier on today. And we're talking about where the cultures of one country uh, need to carry on or be left when you are being hosted by another nation. You've, you've been ambassador to more than just one country. At, at what point do some of your values as, as, as Zambia get left behind, even as you operate within your, your embassy? Uh, first of all, we have international law that guides all these matters. We have uh, international relations practices that guides this. We have the famous 1961 Vienna Convention. Uh, that's, that is now your convergence where you meet. At least you all have your parameters, your privileges, your immunities, and the understanding of the relationship. The relationship. So these relationships are, are guided. You've seen, for example, in Europe, certain European states say the women who are our own citizens but are Arabs and they want to wear the buka, the buka, remember, which covers the whole woman's face. They say, no, for purposes, we have security cameras. We need to identify each citizen who's, who is in public space. So they oblige those Arabs, even if it offends their uh, 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 religious practice not to wear the buka in public. Now, that is a Christian state enforcing its own Christian regulations. But on the other side, the Arabs will also tell you, there is no alcohol in this country. Don't bring, import, smuggle, no alcohol. We find you drinking alcohol, we will export you, we will deport you. Uh, so depending on where you are, you are obliged by those states to follow what they practice. You, when you're in Rome, you do what Romans do. So you cannot come here in Zambia where homosexuality is banned and begin to practice it openly and you say it's human rights. No, it's not. 
you know, we're a Christian nation, we're a religious nation, we are a very deeply cultural um, uh, people. Uh, 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 it's just out of line. Mm. Even if it, our own citizens could be practicing it, it's still illegal. Like I gave an example of the Booker, where a French, but is Arab, is not allowed to wear the Booker in public space because it's against the law there. You're also asp you're aspiring as uh, president of the Patriotic Front and ultimately president of this of this country. Yes, at the moment there's illegalities around the the practice in itself and the promotion. But do you ever see a time where Zambians could be more accepting towards it? I mean, there's there've been different changes in culture. I mean, it's one of the char char characteristics of culture. It's dynamic. Yeah. But do you see a time in future where more people will will be accepting towards it? Well, it depends with generations, you know. Uh, for example, in Latin America, which is deeply Catholic, all laws, all regulations stopped, uh, stopped abortions. There were no abortions. It doesn't matter what you, what you campaigned at the UN. There were no abortions in Latin America. But for the first time in the last two years, we saw Argentina and uh, I think another country is Brazil vote for abortion rights. Because there's been a generation change. Those deeply conservative Catholics, some have changed. And an opinion poll was held, a referendum was held, and it changed. Maybe one day, rights like that may be under discussion. But as we are, mm. this matter has been coming up again and again. I, I know you're also very strong about, for example, criminal defamation. Uh, as it stands, the law... Already has already has its provision uh, on it, but you do not subscribe to to that. You don't you don't believe that it should should still remain criminal um, a, a, a criminal defamation case. On this particular issue of of homosexuality, do you have a problem with it because it's illegal, or do you think it is wrong? Uh, the president sought to uh, to uphold and protect the constitution. That's all our duties. Our duties, if it's in the Constitution, if, if the Constitution doesn't allow it, you buy it, it's bad. You have to follow our laws. You have to be very sensitive as a leader. What are the feelings of the church? What are the feelings of our people on this matter? You have to recall your tradition and cultural values. It's not a one item, one perspective issue. It's a all embodiment of a lot of things. It's illegal in the Constitution. It's a practice frowned upon by our people. Uh, tradition and culture doesn't allow it. You know, then our Christian standing and our Christian heritage doesn't allow it. It has multiple entrances. Even even up to now, homosexuality is not as uh, as colorful as people wish to are promoting it on, uh, on, on social media. You see that even in America, it's a heavily contested debate. You know, and they still cry. That's why they have to go to the law to get protection because even citizens they are rejected. So uh, I think we need to respect the country, its laws, its values. So, 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 meaning from your perspective, and you raise, you raise, you, 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 you're, you're looking at it from the perspective of it being un unlawful, and, and that's why you, you, you're against it. No, no, no. I've just put a wall range. I'm a Christian. We have a Christian heritage. You know, you know how that matter is offensive to the Christians. Then we have our tradition and culture. We don't even have, we don't even have a name for it. Remember, there was a debate just the other day when, when uh, uh, the local news had to interpret what the president was saying, mm. who those people are. And you heard that in Bemba, there was a term that was used, Chimbuka Yupe. And others were saying, no, no, in fact, Chimbuka Yupe is for the intersex. And we have to distinguish. The intersex are not gay. They are not LGBT part of it. But people want to band them together. The intersex is a biological matter. It's those people that are born either girls, turn out to be boys, or are born boys, turn out to be girls, or are born with multiple organs. Those are the intersex. So even in our local language, we don't have a, have a term for it. You can see that this is alien. This is uh, not part of our culture. Because we, we, we can't even find a term for LGBT.